Here are the horoscopes for the week of the 28th of November to the 4th of December 2016. We're coming into the week towards a new moon on Tuesday, so that means first we need to look at the dark moon over the weekend and on Monday. So this is the dark moon in Scorpio and this very much for me wraps up a lot of what's gone on in 2016 because Scorpio is where we go into the dark and bring to conscious awareness, bring to the light all that's been going on behind the scenes and in the depths. And it has been a very, very deep and challenging year so far. So before we step over the threshold to the new moon in Sagittarius and then to the winter solstice later in the month, we need to just take a reckoning of everything that's happened. So what have we learned? Where have we travelled to? What have we become conscious of? And what have we cleansed from the subconscious realms is worth investigating, especially on Monday with the dark moon in Scorpio. 2016 has had three Mercury retrogrades in Earth signs, so we've been learning about self-sufficiency, being self-supported with a strong and flexible spine and letting go of external attachments taking off the scaffolding of dependency and standing strong and tall in our own right. So it has been a very empowering year. If not easy, it has actually been worthwhile. So there are rewards. If we've done the deep inner work, we should be feeling freer, lighter and more flexible and more centred as a result. So by Tuesday we step into the new moon in Sagittarius and the sun and moon are at 7 degrees Sagittarius so this is very much about seeking wisdom. So wisdom is knowledge applied, we can learn something but unless we actually put it into practice it just remains a concept. So what have we learned and how are we going to apply it is very much the theme of this new moon in Sagittarius. The moon falls in the ninth house of the higher mind, higher communication, philosophy, reasoning and knowing. So this is enlightenment of a sort. If we can rise up to the higher frequencies, what have we learned? What are we applying? What's that energy going towards? And this should very much be about the higher mind and enlightenment. The ruling planet of Sagittarius is Jupiter, who's currently squaring off against Pluto. So the Jupiter-Pluto square is teaching us even more about our responsibility versus our freedom. So we need to take responsibility for our choices, for our beliefs and for our actions. What are we giving our responsibility to out of habit? Is it worth it? Should we be self-responsible first? Are we giving away a lot of our energy rather than nourishing ourselves? And are we able to be free? Or is this happy distraction of giving all of our responsible energy externally a means of distracting ourselves from ourselves. So collective responsibility and personal responsibility versus personal freedom. Where does that balance lie? That's what the Pluto-Jupiter square is calling us to review. With the Sun and Moon we also have Saturn and Mercury in Sagittarius. So there's a lot of learning and a lot of information flowing around. So we had two and a half years of Saturn in Scorpio and Saturn in Sagittarius has brought a lot of that information to the front, brought to awareness what we need to know and how we need to apply that knowledge. So broadcasting across the world, valuable information, valuable lessons and all very much to do with self-mastery with Saturn in Sagittarius. So altogether this new moon in Sagittarius is calling us to be strong, to be just and to be magnificent, to take what we've experienced, to let go of what's not serving us and to step forward and to actually speak our truth, to take the responsibility for what is really true and then to act and to come from that place. By Wednesday, Thursday, we get a chance to dive into our creativity, to reconnect with our message, to have a look at what we're here for, what we're contributing to and what our part is. So there's a huge amount of creativity with uh, Venus and Pluto in Capricorn, getting to the core of what we're building. And we did have a Taurian 22 degree moon recently, which began that process. So have a look at what you're building, what you're creating, what you're contributing to and what your legacy will be. 
but diving into our creativity and our potential. Feel that potential. Is it buzzing and full and ready to overflow or have you emptied your pot enough that you can fill up with fresh energy? Either way, it's full or empty, but the empty doesn't mean lacking, it just means potential. So we can dive into the potential of our reborn selves on Wednesday and start to vibrate with excitement on what we're creating. By Thursday we have the Sun square Neptune, so this is another challenging aspect in a way, but not again if we go deep within. Neptune's just coming out of its retrograde phase, so there has been a kind of hazy, misty holding pattern that's been felt lately. But in order that we can go and tune into that vibration, to tune in to where we want our energy to flow, to what our soul desires are, and to focus on recalibrating to our highest vibration. And by Friday and into the weekend, we begin the Mercury retrograde phase. So although Mercury doesn't actually turn retrograde until the 19th of December, Mercury steps into Capricorn on Friday and crosses over the point that it will retrograde back to. So Mercury leaving Sagittarius, all that inspiration, all that information and all that communication that we've experienced during the Sagittarian phase now gets bedded down into application. So Mercury moving into Capricorn, we have the first phase right up until the 19th of December where we're having a look now at the rock solid, the bedrock of our thoughts. Now if we want to have a look at our thoughts and where they've become too rigid then that would be a good use of this first phase. So Mercury direct into Capricorn until the 19th. Where have you become calcified? Where have your thoughts become so rigid that they're creating an external reality as a result that doesn't reflect the true you? We have the ability to change our mind but we do need to check in first and have a look at any repeating patterns and any core beliefs that aren't true or that were true in the past but aren't true now. So if we don't check in we create mental prisons that are very hard to escape from and this Mercury retrograde phase in Capricorn and Sagittarius will be a bit of a shake-up by the time we get to mid-month because it's Capricorn the builder, the one that likes to work on a challenge for a long and slow period of time with endurance to build something of great worth then we want to make sure that the goal that we reach at the end is the right goal. So we need to go back to the foundation of what we're working towards and check in and make sure that it's still in alignment with our current goals. So asking ourselves simple questions really, is this thought mine? When did I first pick it up? Is this belief true? Is it serving me? Where am I heading? What am I building? These are the kind of questions that we can ask over the next couple of weeks so that we're not heading off in the wrong direction. We can also play with Mercury retrograde. Can you change your mind? Can you think the opposite and see how that feels just to check where you are on the scale? Especially if you've developed beliefs that are all the way along to one end of the scale or the other. We've seen a lot lately about polarity consciousness, about forming opinions according to what we've been told about this side or that side of an issue. So do you have to be all the way to one end? Can you actually have a mature and flexible approach where you're not having to join this team or that team immediately and then state your given opinion too quickly? But can we become open-minded? Can we be mature in our all-rounded perspective of any issue and make our own mind up. When we're having conversations, can we listen to the other person or are we just waiting for our turn to be able to speak again? Because this is very prolific with this much communication going on with all the different means of communicating from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram to text. This is all very much encouraging people just to be on the speaking part of the equation. But when do you actually listen? Mercury and Capricorn will take us to the depths of listening to actually be able to hear the roots of where that person is coming from or what that issue is about without having to jump in and state a very quick reacted opinion straight away. 
So can we listen quietly? Can we dig to the roots of any issue? Can we understand and incorporate new learning by being still and quiet long enough to actually be able to hear between the words and in the gaps? So altogether a very, very deep week. We're coming through the dark moon in Scorpio, bringing a close to 2016, bringing to full awareness what we've discovered and how we're going to apply that wisdom. And then with the new moon in Sagittarius, being able to be true, pure and to the point, find simple enlightenment and apply it, especially with Saturn and Mercury going through that part of the chart as well. Then with the Neptune stationary, square the sun, recalibrating, where is our light, where's our inner gold? What does it feel like and where are we going to radiate that? Getting back to the point so that by the time the Mercury Capricorn retrograde phase comes in, we're not tearing off in the wrong direction or giving away our power and our energy to something that we won't appreciate when we get there. And that doubles up with the Jupiter-Pluto square, personal responsibility to ourselves as well as what we're responsible to creating on the outside. So very, very deep, very inward, very real week as we go towards the new moon in Sagittarius, which is the first of the rebirths of the year between now and the, the winter solstice, where we'll be in the flux of the Mercury retrograde as well. So I feel that this is a very long and deep midwinter rebirthing period. And all we need to do is be very honest, very true to ourselves and keep it simple but decide where we're giving our energy, to connect with our creativity, and to radiate our pure light. So those are the horoscopes for this week, and I'll see you next week. I've created a special new Zodiac series, which is a information pack on how to work with each of the signs. So there's information in there how to work on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual plane, how to work with crystals more deeply, a unique zodiac blend recipe to make your own zodiac oil and information about your alternative power animals and the Celtic tree calendar. So this is available for you to print out and put into a folder and give as a gift or just to receive the PDF for yourself but there'll be one for each sign and they are £10 so please do contact me if you'd like to receive one of those. I also have vouchers for readings, so if you'd like to gift somebody the present of an astrological reading for the festive season, then I do have vouchers available for that. Of course, I'm available one-to-one -one for your readings on Skype or in person, and I still have the online group where we're discussing many current topics and astrological explorations as we go along. It's a great way to learn your chart, so you can take a whole year and work with the aspects as they happen in a lovely warm community and on top of that I have a whole series of online courses which are also available as gifts so there's the astrology foundation course there's the whole course there's the tarot trilogy two courses working with the moon cycles and one course to get in deeper with the elements and harmonize your space so for any of that please do contact me zoehind7 at gmail.com